Subscribe to Hard to Find Media on YouTube.com slash Hard to Find Media Network. This shit is free. Share it. Blast it. Fuck it. K-A-O-P, AM 1045, Seattle's hottest AM station. My name's Danny. I'm Joseph. And this is Accents on Purpose, a weekly radio show where we cover all the music that's happening in Seattle, the Pacific Northwest, and beyond. Oh, yeah. Joseph, that was a killer cut. Yeah, what? speaking of uh, music beyond, that's uh, part of the new Big Ups record that just came out. I can't remember the name of the song. It's the second second song on the record. I really liked it. Uh, like to listening to that. It's you, way better than the first one. You always hate the first song in every, every I record. don't care for intro songs. I don't care for the intro we just did. Ooh. I just feel like I want to jump right in. I want to be right in the middle of, of whatever's happening. Once I was looking through Joseph's record collection and every record I pulled out, the first track had a scratch mm-hmm. through it so yeah. that he could never play it again. <laughs> and I marked out, I used a permanent <laughs> marker and marked no, it No, 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 yeah. no. All around the record. Yeah, yeah. The hard part for me is that then that makes the second song the intro, so I, I really can't get away from it. Can't get away from it. You can't get away from anything. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, how have you been this week? I've been really good. Anything special happen? Uh, I submitted. Um, I'm trying to submit. I don't really know. A Thirty-three how. and a third. <laughs> no, I did. Have we talked about that? I've I written two yeah, before when yeah. I was in high school. Yeah. They're terrible. Really bad. Um, one about the Minutemen and the other about the Red Light Sting. Uh, if you want to publish those, uh, not as a 33 and a third, please email us. Email us at accentsonpurpose at gmail.com. Accentsonpurposepodcast at yeah. gmail.com. Maybe that's why none of the emails come oh, through. Oh, we get so many emails. Oh, right. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to submit headlines to The Onion. Cause really they don't like that. They don't like they, it? They don't I like figured that. they don't. They, so they, they, they don't think anyone else is funny. But I've come up with two in a, that I really well, like. Well, let's hear them. Do you want to hear them? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first, second, se- second best one first. Oh, okay. Second best one first is um, hypocrite Eddie Vedder keeps calling son daughter. Nothing. Uh, that's that's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the one that I'm really proud of and stay with me here is is <laughs> so I'm guessing this is gonna be a long one. <laughs> no, I don't know. Tchaikovsky no longer trusts Beethoven as source of reliable news. Roll over Beethoven. Tell Tchaikovsky the news. Nothing. That is. I mean, it's a stretch. It's Donna Lynn would like that. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, remember that Beatles record? That girl that bought the record? <laughs> oh, the oh, yeah. Um, well, see, this is why The Onion probably does not like when people try to submit stuff. Speaking of publications, I know The Onion no longer has a print publication, but Joseph asked me how my week was. Uh, how was your week? So there? I'm glad you asked because <laughs> yeah. uh, I went to yard sale. Yard sale season has begun. Yeah. Um, everyone in Seattle is moving to New York, and so they're having yeah, yard sales. Yeah, what the fuck? I moved back from New York. Now everyone's moving. It's, they were hey, just waiting. Guys, PSA, anyway, it sucks. Uh, so I was at a yard sale, and <clears throat> I came pretty late, and so there's a, there's a slim pickings. Uh, but over in the free pile, I found two magazines. Let me pull them out. Okay. <sighs> Uh, it's a spin and a Rolling Stone, both from August 1989. Wow. Uh, which I didn't really notice they were both from August 1989 until I got home. And I want to know why they only had two magazines, both from the same month. Why are they so big? Oh, that's the way they used to be. Really? Yeah, ba- oh. paper used to be free. I was one. I was one yeah. at that time, maybe. Um, Joseph, there is a lot going on in 1989. August. Yeah, talk to me about it. Um... The Who are doing their 25th twenty uh, fifth year anniversary tour. Wow. Isn't that so cute? I mean, yeah. Oh, uh, I just saw Bowie's name. Uh, oh, yeah, because his Tin Machine record just came out. Right. Um, which, oh, yeah, so here's the, the, uh, the adults are all right. Ooh, I get it. Uh, I get so, it. yeah, and I think it's pretty funny because uh, I think it was last year I was at the movie theater and I saw an advertisement for their 50th anniversary <laughs> tour with Joan Jett that they're playing at the Tukwila Casino. Yeah, off I-5, north of 405, east of Alderwood Mall. You still got that gambling problem? <laughs> no, I just grew up in Washington hearing that fucking radio ad all the time. Uh, the Stones have completed Steel Wheels. Um, they're really excited about it. Ringo Starr begins first American tour. So much is going on. Ooh, um, uh, Ooh whoa. Oh, what? Cleveland affirms Rock Hall of Fame deal. Yep. 
This City is must, big for your I town. know. City must raise funds by mid-November. Were you a part of that? Did you pay taxes on that? Did your parents? Um, you know, both my parents died in Vietnam. Uh. Um, there's, <laughs> there's no encore for Woodstock. Hmm. Uh, so anyways, I'll be reading from this throughout uh, this episode. One of my favorite articles, oh no, not again, it's the safe sequel syndrome. Uh, it's someone's complaining that there's too many sequels. Oh wow, the they, movie. <laughs> they uh, I'm pretty sure this person committed prescient. suicide yeah. this year. Yeah. Uh, but uh, is it prescient or prescient? Does anyone know how to say that? Uh, if you know, email us at actionsonpurposepodcast at gmail.com. Anyways, uh, we got Karate Kid 2, Lethal Weapon 2, Ghostbusters 2. Uh, oh, Ghostbusters. Another James Bond movie. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you can't be mad about another. Like, I understand more sequels, but by this point in 89, you can't be mad about more James Bond. Well, talk to Peter Travers about it. Is that really who wrote it? Yeah. I don't know who that is. Um... A review of Great Balls of Fire with Dennis Quaid. When Harry Met Sally review. Oh, I have what he's having. Um, anyways. Uh, anyways, Joseph. What is she's having? Oh, I fucked it up. So, Joseph, uh, speaking of living in the past. Yeah. Uh, last year, about this time, uh, I went to Hollow Earth Radio. Uh, not to try to get a job. <laughs> Uh, because I don't think they hire people from they the They pay area. really well, though. Yeah, but they're all about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. All about the F. I, I applied to volunteer there like four times. I never even got yeah. a response. Didn't you That's true. Have, didn't you want to have a pun-themed punk show? Uh, maybe we talked about that at one time. No, no, no. I think you Did I have put that yeah. in the application? Yes, maybe I can find that in my email somewhere. Were the band's names be puns? Is that what... I don't remember. Yeah. Pun, wasn't it called like the punk show or something? Yeah. 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 Uh, but anyways, I was at Hollow Earth Radio. Uh, Daniel uh, Higgs's uh, Fountain Sun band was playing. Uh, it was an amazing show, and uh, probably like, I think it was like the fourth or fifth time I'd seen Daniel Higgs play. And about a week ago, uh, I saw that uh, it had been recorded, mm. and I could listen to it at any time. And wow. I'm excited Any, about that. Anytime. Yeah. And uh, the reason that that is available is because of our next guest, uh, Joseph. Uh, is it Trina? Trina. Trina. Yeah. Trina. Sorry. Yeah. Joseph Trina, who runs uh, the Pacific Northwest Lo-Fi Archives. Yeah. Hey, welcome. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, cool. First question, Joseph. Yes. How's it, how does it feel to be the second best Joseph in the room? Yeah, it's, it's oh. awkward. It's awkward with the Josephs. No way. You're the first it's, best. It's, the it's, guests uh, are the guests are the best. That's why it runs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also a Leo, so I kind of I'm really sure of myself. Yeah. yeah. Do you Taurus. Want to, I'm do you want to call you Leo? Kind of Taurus. Yeah. Leo. That's it. For the rest of the cooking for the rest of the interview, you're you're bullshit, Joe. And uh, you're Leo J. Leo J. Okay, fair. Uh, Leo J. Yeah. Um, so uh, tell us about the, So it's not only um, the music that you archive, you also have a pretty extensive uh, archive of photography. Yeah, yeah. So kind of what uh, started first? Um, how did you get the idea to start archiving lo-fi music yeah. in the Pacific Northwest? So when Why I was... Why don't you go beyond? Yeah, so when I kind of started taking photos, I got really into photography. Uh, when I was younger, I grew up in New York, and I told all my friends I was going to be like a photographer. You know, I was really into like the Annie Leibovitz, like Rolling Stone stuff. It's just, oh, you don't have Rolling Stone; it's a spin. No, it's it, it's a Rolling Stone and a spin. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so yeah, you know, growing up on, I probably read that uh, that that, came that out. same one exactly. Yeah. yeah, which is pretty wild. So yeah, I was really into kind of music. Um, and then I decided to be a photographer. I didn't have a camera yet. And then I got a camera. <laughs> Which is yeah. funny because everyone, yeah, I mean, you need a camera. That's what, I, when I decided to be in a band, I didn't have an instrument yeah. or play one. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I, once I bought a book, How to Be a Photographer, it said, first thing, get the attitude. Second, get the, get the lens. Whoa. Yeah, that's deep, yeah. It's kind so of, you had the attitude. Uh, yeah, I had the, yeah, and then I got the... Um, the fucking lens. <laughs> the lens. Yeah. Is that, way, is that really what happened? Or I was like trying to. Uh, yeah. I was trying. To, I was like, how do I? Yeah. Yeah. I so you started photography. Yeah. So yeah, I would go to a lot of shows. Grew up with a lot of friends who played music. Um, so just really, I just historically really liked archiving stuff. You know, yeah. like I was really into. <laughs> Yeah, even like when I was younger like just I really like I, I like to call it actually memory hoarding like I actually I feel like I hoard things to the extent uh, so photography is a great way to kind of hoard memories um, so that's kind of how that started and then um, 
always wanted to kind of hear and I recorded my friends, you know, bands play, my bands play, it'd be like a boom box, you know, just bless, play and record. So it's just something I kind of always done, um, kind of to like a flaw, like it's just like, it's so much, just like I don't even really get to listen to a lot of the stuff. Oh, I just yeah. record so much stuff and just hoarding, you know, hoarding the stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, so that's kind of, you know, it just kind of evolved. So kind of photography and music kind of came to my like, preteen self about the same time and it just kind of uh, evolved into so I went to school for fine art photography and um, that's kind of what I ended up doing and then still kind of always had like you know a heavy foot in the uh, music side of things too so so when you were in New York when did you move to Washington uh, 2004 wow okay what were you running from um, New York is awful. Yeah, that's, right? That's, that's pretty bad. Yeah. I lived there for two years. No, if that's our enough. listeners don't know. Yeah. Hated it's, it. Yeah. Hated it. If you were going to give, uh, uh, bullshit Joseph, yeah. if, if you were going to give uh, New York City a Yelp uh, review and rating, what would it be? Uh, two stars, uh, bad service. <laughs> Uh, Leo J. Uh, yeah, so I feel like the it's all about the comments, you know. Who cares about the ratings? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, feel like I love it when people on Yelp like will give something like a really poor rating, uh, like you know, or say they go into a record shop to buy a record, yeah. and um, you don't have a big CD selection, yeah. and they're like they'll go out into like and I said you know a record store they'll leave a Yelp review and they'll be like that place had no CDs I you know I don't listen to records like but it's like why you know you go, go to a different yeah, store yeah. you know you know I. I like going to Yelp, uh, picking a restaurant I like, and yeah. just reading the one star reviews. Yeah, it's awesome. And one of That's my favorite part. Yeah, one of my favorite <laughs> things is when people from like out of town come to Seattle and they're like they start off their Yelp review like, "Okay, Seattle, here's some news: clothes <laughs> is not worth the wait." <laughs> uh, uh, well, glad, glad we know. I mean, we gotta let people in New York know. Exactly. Uh, it sucks there. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, so you moved to... Oh, I also drove out here. Um, you drove out? Yeah, it took a, like seven weeks. Drove across oh. country with a good friend. Uh, we went the route of going all the way down to New Orleans and cutting through Texas and mm -hmm. driving up. So yeah, we, we did it. It was a nice road trip. Did you have uh, nightmares about all your stuff getting so You know, I didn't. I traveled really light. Okay. I, I don't think... Uh, yeah, I didn't have much. So yeah, it was, it was kind of fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, we still like backed up the, the Jeep to the back of the wall and, you know, tricks like that. But um, yeah, so did that, came out here um, and kind of got really into the music scene here. I was really in, like growing up in New York as a teen, like in the 90s and stuff, like K Records, like Beat Happening, like that Beck album that came out. Um, so I was really into the music scene out here, like into the microphones and uh, things that were going up, up in Anacortes. So I was pretty excited to... Um, just kind of come out here. Uh, I was also really into like the grunge scene in the '90s. I know a lot of people weren't. Uh, so I mean, yeah, I'm still into yeah. a lot of the '90s. Yeah, '90s. Music. Yeah, it's like came out of Washington. I think it's great, and I think like with the resurgence of like uh, fucking Naomi Punk and So Pitted. So 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 Pitted. Yeah, yeah, like So Pitted. I mean, I think it's still a pretty huge influence. And, totally. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah, so I like you know came out here like really wanting to be part of that uh, kind of scene. So yeah, I kind of moved into a house that was doing some some shows and you know got to meet some folks and yeah, just kind of started photographing from from day one, um, you know, and recording stuff. Uh, I met Amber and Garrett from Hollow Earth Radio too um, because we were kind of like networked within like the house scene back in the day. Uh, so we, you know, part of their big thing was about recording, uh, you know, local shows too. So it kind of really went hand in hand with that, uh, kind of aesthetic. So, you know, I DJed quite, uh, for the first, you know, four years or so at Hollow Earth Radio. So was it back when it was still in the house? Yeah. Well, you know, it was in, you know, before it was even, it was in like a house before the house that nobody knows about. Ooh. It's like whenever I bring it up, they're like, no, you're wrong. It's like the first yeah. house was like, no, uh, but Garrett was literally- So are you getting a scoop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this you know, is this scoop. is a scoop, but nobody, no one believes me about these stories. This is like awesome. Raisin Bran, this is two yeah. scoops. So we, I think this is an urban legend? Yes. yes. This is our first urban yeah. legend. First urban Let's legend. Do oh, awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. So yeah, there was a house before the house. That the radio signal coming yes. from inside the house. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Uh, um, what was your show called? Uh, it was called One Bean Taco. Nice. Yeah. Why? Whoa. 
Um, is it sad? No, is this is actually an awesome story. Yeah, it's like so. Garrett and I. So that one, like the early days before it was in the house that everyone thinks that it started. Yeah, uh, the house before that. Uh, yeah. It was that Garrett and his sister were living uh, in a house. I don't even remember where it was. But we're doing a show. My buddy Jim came with me, and we were just doing a show. I don't even think we were broadcasting at the time. I don't even think we had nice cast or anything. I think. So you I, probably had more listeners than we have for right now. <laughs> hey, I mean, yeah. Really. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so Garrett had, we got there and I was like hungry, my buddy Jim and I, and, uh, Garrett had like one leftover bean taco and he's like, you know, like it was just whatever. It's like, I was like, cool. So I think me and Jim fought, fought over the taco. Um, That's how Jim so, died. so Jim died and I ate the taco <laughs> and we called like collectively that was the show at the time and it just kind of carried on. So weird, stupid. I don't, I don't know. No, about that's, that I mean, but there's one bean taco as opposed to, I, th- I was picturing a, a tortilla with one yeah, tiny Yeah, and that's the thing. It right. could be anything you wanted to be. That's what I thought yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I thought like you would be like, tacos. what kind of bean were you thinking? I was like thinking pinto, pinto or black. Yeah, yeah, pinto? yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Pinto. Nice. Whenever I go to Chipotle, yeah. like once or, once or twice, Chip- three times a day. Yeah. Oh. Was it easy when it was closed when, after all that? Like, the, uh, yeah, no, that's when I snuck in. Oh, that's why I'm still going. I got the coupon. Oh my god. Yeah. Chipotle used to be a sponsor of ours, and then we tasted the food. Yeah, <laughs> we, sued, yeah. we sued them. You can't accept money from them, yeah. 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 So one bean taco. Oh, so, okay, so whatever. Uh, years go by. Yeah. Now it's kind of, Hollow Earth Radio is kind of growing. There's more people involved. And um, I don't know why, I don't know if Garrett was doing, Garrett, and I, Garrett's just a strange dude. I love him. Uh, but he would like, Googled stuff or like I don't know if he was Googling one bean taco or whatever. So he was like Googling it and or I was Googling it or we were Googling it together. Uh, or maybe we weren't even using Google. Maybe it was Bing? like SG. Maybe yeah. it was like, what's the Yahoo, Yahoo server? Is it just Yahoo? It's Yahoo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yahoo's please use this. Yeah. <laughs> Yahoo's we're still we're around. Still around yeah. yeah, tagline. <laughs> um so one bean taco, uh, an album comes up. Oh like image shirts there's a, a photo of an album uh vicky galansky and the title of her um album is called one bean taco to go um is the to go in parentheses no it's uh, not a parenthesis maybe, but there was be one bean good. taco comma to go oh, okay. yeah, yeah, it was nice it's great great album so we listened to the tracks scared and i were always into really finding like weird shit that nobody possibly has heard of um and we found this album and it was like, wow, this is actually pretty good. Like, this is awesome. Um, so then um, we were researching more about her, finding these YouTube videos, finding out that her dad like was this musician back in the day and producer. Um, and she was just kind of weird enough where the songs were like kind of like cute, but also kind of eerie and weird. And uh, she has songs about like like these this Chris like she used to live here for a little bit too so there was all these like synchronicities that were happening with Victoria Linsky and us so we decided to email her we're like dude we have to have her like we need to call her in and have her on the show so um we did and we just kind of became friends with her and then That's pretty cool yeah and then we invited her so magma festivals like the festival that goes on every March um every weekend pretty much for for um for Hollow Earth Radio so we actually had her play uh that that year she came out and like played like, oh, the songs. Awesome. Yeah. She had all these like, yeah, it's pretty wild though. Yeah. It's good stuff. But power so, of the internet. So one bean taco. Yeah. It, it ended up being this whole like connection with Victoria and yeah. Yeah. That doesn't explain how you started the Northwest. It doesn't. Yeah. I have a little bit of like, I mean, that was like, a good urban legend though. Oh, it started with fast. a house and then, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I will take this all over the place. So if you want to keep it on track, just, Lord, no, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like, look, a shiny thing, a cat. Um, so you start taking photos, yeah. you start recording shows, and you got involved in the music scene through Garrett Hollow Earth Radio. No, well, yeah, yeah. That don't make sense. I'm just I'm you're summing putting, it up for yeah, the audience and for myself. That's, yeah, okay. Um, can we take a little break uh, for some news from back from 1989? <laughs> yes. Because, uh, wait, this is a good one. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is from Talking All That Jazz and Spin. August 1989. Uh, Ice-T will be out late August with the album Just Watch What You Say, featuring the single Freedom of Speech, which was sampled from Jimmy's, quote, Foxy Lady, and centers on a rap with Jello Biafra. Whoa, really? Yeah. He had a rap with Jello Biafra? According to all talking all that jazz. Wait, it, can I say that it's, I feel like this is the dish, the dirt, and the inside dope, sussed by Danny Fields? Yep, Danny Fields used to get all the dirt. I like that he sussed it. 
Um, just the idea of iced tea. Yeah, anyways. Uh, so back to you, Archive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So where were we? Yeah, I for, so yeah, just pretty much. I'm just a hoarder. That's all it really is. So I just kind of archive. Well, but everything. there's a difference between being a hoarder and then you know paying money to have a website to yeah. have people access their stuff. Yeah. When did you? Like, how do you choose like what goes up and what doesn't go up? That's a good question. Yeah. These are okay. Well, that's these are the inside question. scoops. There was two questions. What, what, how do you choose and like when when did you start the actual like PMW Lo-Fi archive? It started as a blog like on Tumblr. Um, so. That's kind of how it started, and then I was like, ah, I don't know. It was just kind of weird. Like, I have a, an issue with like kind of like being able to like rate things or like stuff. Oh, so yeah, so it kind of um, so having uh, hosting it on the blog, I think, sounded a little bit. Uh, I just I just hate getting caught up in that. Like going to school for fine art photography too, and like Instagram. It's like I can't even take a photo anymore without thinking of like. Oh, like, it's just, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, right? with, without thinking yeah. of, like, filters and yeah. will someone get enough likes on this and stuff. So it transitioned from that blog into the website uh, yeah. when I when I started a new website, too, because my other website was hosted on, like, Tumblr, but it was, like, a plug-in. I don't know. Yeah. So that's when I switched it over. Um, and then I just, like, yeah, it's just kind of, like, it's that. It's an archive, and I feel like it just kind of goes forever, and it's... Um, so I, I, that's kind of um, fresh that it's uh, kind of switched over to that platform. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Do you use Squarespace? Uh, Squarespace. We're the only podcast that Squarespace doesn't sponsor. Uh, if you want to sponsor us, we'll take any money. <laughs> can I get a, Can I get a Squarespace sponsorship for yes. my? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah, cool. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Like uh, I'll just put a. Can we just make a deal. <laughs> yeah. For Squarespace. Is there a logo? It's just like a little square there. Yeah. Logo. yeah so yeah. it'll just blend in nicely in the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. So what What is your website called? Just my the website that you go to yeah and that's the other thing it's like uh, it, it's my name so it's it's J- Joseph P Trainer um, mm-hmm. dot com and then it's like a backslash P N W and so how many years do these archives go back all the way to two thousand? I think two thousand. Uh, they're going back to like two thousand seven. Cool. Um, so that's kind of like I don't know and I feel like it started too with just like I was recording stuff on my phone and I would like actually take a photo on the phone oh cool uh, yeah I was like at a show at Gallery 1412 yeah that's, yeah that's the lo-fi part and now I like, got like a this handheld recorder and I was like oh this is kind of getting a little less lo-fi now I just yeah. gotta, what do you call it I don't know um, yeah so yeah the first it goes back to like 2007 that's um, cool yeah first stuff so do you like go into the concert and be like okay I'm gonna record this and put it up or like halfway through you're like okay i'm i'm feeling this yeah you should or do you like or you do or like when you're walking home or you're like fuck i should have recorded that i always um end up recording it unless it's in a situation where someone doesn't want to be recorded and i try to kind of feel that on um kind of local knowledge um because it's not something like i always want permission before i post something so i always will reach out to the artist and ask first but i actually end up recording every show i go to Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so if I post it or not. Um, How many hard drives of... You know, it's not... It's they're pretty small files. Like, when I was recording them with my phone, those files were yeah. tiny. Like, yeah, it was, yeah, like, yeah. nothing. Uh, now, with the feel... You know, if I'm recording them as way... I mean, it's taking up more space, but I'm still... I mean, hard drives are so cheap now. <laughs> yeah, they are really cheap. Yeah. The beautiful thing about hoarding. You know, yeah. you just get another hard drive, fresh it's start. Fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm a pack rat, but everything is physical, and it's yeah. it's really hard to move. That's completely true. I've seen your record collection. Yeah. Um, also, so just I wonder if you agree with uh, Q-Tip from August oh, 1989. Q-tip. All right. Uh, Q-Tip um, when they're they're talking about uh, sampling and hip hop music, and he said sampling is just a phase. It's going to wear out eventually. Wow. Oh, do you agree? Really? Do you agree with him? I completely agree. Okay. Same thing with the internet. It's just a phase. <laughs> Did Prince say that the internet? TV was- is just a phase. I feel like everything new that's been like threatening or weird has just a, been a phase. The only, the only thing I can think of that's been a phase is the mini disc. Yes. Mm. And, and like maybe beta, you know, something. Great for archiving cool. too. People used to record so many shows yeah. with those mini discs. I've read that like the a patent, patent office cards. guy in like 1901 was like, what, we should stop giving patents because everything's already been invented or Whoa. something like that. I heard that from Ricky Gervais. I don't know if that's true. Uh, well, I'm sure it's well researched. Okay. No. <laughs> Uh, if you're that pen officer, uh, you're dead, and so you're not listening. <laughs> well, you don't believe in the that email could have ever been invented, so. Uh, so what have been some of the highlights of uh, the things that you recorded and put up? Uh, besides the yeah. fucking Fountain Sun show, which was awesome. That was an amazing, and every time, I've seen Daniel play yeah. so many times, too. Like, back in, were you here for, like, the, um, when SSMA was open? <sighs> Um, yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, SS Marine Internet. Oh, SS Marine Internet. I didn't see. Daniel Hicks played there, but it's just like he just like 
The first time I saw him was when he was just by himself at the yeah. Black Lodge. Yeah. Which he had like the really long banjo. Yeah, yeah. That like box that he squeezed. <sighs> he uh, just and he got everyone to sing. Yeah, which was he really just, great. Yeah. He has his presence where he can, can just control. Like it's just like it's like I feel like I was like yes, like let's all follow Daniel into Big Sur and you know yeah. like it's just like he he like stares through you with his eyes when you see him and he's so kind and gentle and it's, it's like a good thing he uses his powers for good. <laughs> yeah, it's but, totally. Right? But then he like drops in like jokes and stuff. And He'll like talk about like Star Trek. Or he's something. amazing. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? No, yeah, no. He, he was talking about like some episode of Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, that's one time I saw him play. So, mm. anyways, um, he's a pretty magical man. He's yeah. He yeah. But that every time I see him, it's just like it's like going to church. It's yeah. like yes, like <laughs> I'm just gonna sit back and like take it all in. Yeah, it's really it's good shit. So that show, yeah, that was that was definitely a highlight. I recorded a, I recorded a Mount Erie played. He did nice. a, a five day tour with Will Oldham and he was playing with two female singers. Um, when was this? This was, I don't know, I had, and that's the other great thing about being a memory hoarder, I could just go back to the website and be like, oh, that was yeah. in this day. Um, but it was it was going a few ba- years back. It was, it was at the um, uh, Neptune, um, okay. so not like very far back. But yeah, it was it was during his uh, pre-human voice, uh, that album where it's like acapella, like computer stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he had that those kind of arrangements with two female vocalists. And, uh, that's so, before my time of knowing yeah. him, so I don't so, feel yeah, I recorded I recorded the entire show and I um, posted a song and I you know I asked Phil sent him an email and he got back and he's like oh that's great he's like do you mind sending me the file and like so he put it on his like band camp and selling it oh now. wow so it's like an official release now which is pretty cool that's cool um, so yeah it's it's uh, that was a nice one too and that was that was a great one too because it was like kind of like I mean every time I feel like Phil plays in kind of different arrangements a lot um, but that was a really nice one like uh, it's just him and a guitar and, and two other vocals like it was really really quite nice yeah um do you guys want uh, a truly hep listening experience what is hep it's kind of like hip oh do you want a truly hep is it hip hop nope oh um do you also want money to go to aclu in community for creative sure. nonviolence? sure yeah uh we should buy the positive force compilation all right uh, from Discord Records. Oh, wow. Uh, I probably have that. Soul SoulSci, yeah. Ignition, and 13 yeah. more will simultaneously supporting your own right to be free. Is that beef eater on it? Because I'm out. If it Ooh. Beef eater. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it's weird uh, that they described uh, a record with Fugazi, Soul SoulSci, and Ignition as a hep listening experience. I didn't, I'm surprised, too, back I, then that Discord was even getting any um, press and, uh, like, spin. or Yeah, or same. Thing. Especially with Fugazi's name yeah. in 89. Like... That's they still kind of like yeah. like they're they were around, but they they didn't really like talking to the press. At all. Well, this is just reviewing a record. Yeah, so I don't know about this. Um, so but, do you think that was just a misprint? It had to be. Did that come with like a, a signed like? Did someone authorize that it's actually a an actual magazine from nineteen? What has the date on it? Yeah, but it could I be a date. You. you think this is someone it. did this at Kinko's? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> this is just a fanzine. <laughs> I would love to make a fanzine that's just an old <laughs> man. Like, yeah. I do uh, National Geographic from 47. <laughs> I just make it all up. Oh, no, no. You do, do them from like like 32 and there's like Nazis everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's dark. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of official yeah. releases, uh, you've officially released a few things. Yeah, I sure did. Uh, including... Yeah. Uh, a tribute to One Foot in the Grave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what? Okay, I'll repeat, I'll, 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 I'll repeat myself. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking. Um, so how did that come about? Because that... Yeah. I mean, one thing about that... I So that record is, uh, for me, uh, you know, besides being a really great record, I mean, I knew about Beck from uh, MTV, and then it was a friend's older brother that was just like, oh, no, 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 this is what you should listen to. Yeah. And uh, I taped his copy of One Foot in the Grave and I used to listen to it yeah, all the time yeah. and it was just almost like a, I felt like it was just like really hard to find right after it came out at yeah. least for me uh, and then so when I finally got like a used copy I was like so happy because it's like beginning to end an amazing record yeah. it doesn't sound like anything yeah. else he's done and I just wish he would have done stuff like that totally yeah, and that for me was kind of like growing up on the East Coast too, and, and having that album because um, it kind of came out just slightly after like the first release. So it's like, yeah. and it was like K Records, and it's just like, so that was my introduction to K Records. So I was like, wow, what's this going on over there? You know, and it was, uh, then just kind of like, I think I picked up like a, a comp that they put out K Records, and then I got into all this other stuff. But that album, and the reason I chose that too, um, was kind of. 
Um, and there was like some sh- shady stuff that happened with that release too, as far as like, <laughs> and it's just like now it's oh, even, with Calvin Johnson well, or? you know, it's even hard to say because it's like, there's so much, there's just so much going on right now in conversations about smaller record labels. And it's not, uh, there's no, there's no right or wrong. It's just like, you know, it, record labels aren't what they used to be. Yeah. But any, so that album, I would say from stories I've heard, K kind of got really screwed over, you know, mm. financially because there was no contract and yeah. you know, Beck just yanked it. Um, so, but for me, that album was kind of like moving out here and kind of like really feeling like the energy and stuff. It was more of a release and a, and a tribute more so to the actual album, not to like a Beck. It, it was, um, yeah. 2K records. Yeah. 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 And, um, purposefully too, all the musicians that were on it were all Northwest musicians at the time. Some of them actually moved. <laughs> um, so, um, well, right, right off yeah. a few, who, who are some of the hard gets? Yeah. So, you know, everyone, I, I love <laughs> everyone was a hard get. Yeah. <laughs> it was the, the you know, hardest well, no, no, it was easy. People were really excited about it and people, Unfortunately, there weren't enough tracks. Like I, I would have actually loved to have more people even on it. Uh, some people actually asked and was really interested. It was like, ah, I already have my folks, you know. Um, but there was no one was really hard to get. Um, I did have some turn downs. Uh, I feel like I don't even want to mention. That's fine. Don't yeah, worry. it's weird. And it's more. Uh, yeah, we, we, more. we don't do the shit here. <laughs> yeah. No point. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, everyone was pretty pretty eager. Uh, it was kind of awkward when I would be like, oh, you would do this song really well. And I tried to let folks pick out what song they wanted to do. I don't want to like, but I would say, oh, this this kind of, I could see this. Um, and then, uh, you know, a few folks actually never heard the album, which I was kind of surprised about. So it's like they were like, heard the song, learned it, played it and recorded it. So that was pretty neat too. Who was on it? Um, so who do we have on it? We had um, Curious Mystery, uh, Pika Beats, uh, Jordan O. Jordan, Your Heart Breaks with oh, Carl cool. Wow. Um, Shenandoah Davis. Oh, I love her. Yeah, we blows. Uh, Brad Dunn, who's this amazing musician who no one will ever hear of, unfortunately. He's a just brilliant uh, guitarist. He does like a lot of prepared guitar shit and plays really wild stuff. Um, he was on it. Uh, Cock and Swan. Quake Palace, this is Colleen. Can you still pick this up on like the internet? Uh, yeah, it's free download on the Bandcamp. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you go to his archive site. Oh, yeah, it's true. It, it's yeah. linked uh, from my website. You can, uh, there's a link to it to the Bandcamp. And nice. I just have all, all the stuff that's on there. It's just, uh, you know, suggested donation, but free. I What's guess. the biggest suggested donation you ever got? I think they're like a dollar is kind of standard. <laughs> yeah. not, not like a track. I've like always, a dollar well, I've for the album. I wondered if, like, but some, someone, when people say suggested donation for like a demo, if some guy, like yeah. rich guy who loves punk music is just giving out like $200 donations or something. Yeah. <laughs> like it how happens. Rich, rich guy no. equals $200. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm a billionaire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I $200. <laughs> I like that approach. I think that's great. Like even like, you know, I've I've done doors so much for shows and stuff. It's like people actually do. Like sometimes people will come in, see like some punk band that's like touring from San Diego and they'll, you know, they'll throw down like 20 bucks. Like it's like, so like the whole pay what you can. And then like also not having it be like about the money. And if people really can't afford it, like I just, I think I love that kind of method. Yeah. I like releasing it, like the, the idea of releasing stuff too, to kind of be like, just pay what you can, you know, like, you know, I don't know, like it's worth something. I definitely don't mind paying door fees, even like yeah. $10, like touring bands, $10, $12. Yeah. I don't like when you go to a show and they're like, it's seven to $10 and you're like, okay, well I'll pay seven. And they're like, hmm, okay. <laughs> Which has happened to me. And I'm like, do you think maybe that's just, you're internalizing that maybe? No. no? I, well, can you, can you fess up though? You're wearing a tuxedo and you're lighting a cigar with a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> yes. And I, oh, and I took well, out yeah. like a bunch of twenties and I was like, <laughs> and, I, and then I paid yeah. for it in change yeah. <laughs> just to fuck with it. <laughs> and he, I, I'm just saying like, he, choose he, a he and then have donations for touring bands or whatever. Fuck it. Yeah. He, he asked if they take, they took AMX. AMX. Oh, AMX. AMX. AMXPX. Thank you. I grew up at like 13 years old. I was like, oh man, yeah. this is punk. Oh god, what a. And then, are they next week's guest? Yep. <laughs> wow, Five yeah, next, next, wow, yeah. that's awesome. Maybe I'll have to cry. Oh, yeah, that's. Well, let's go to a punk rock show. What? It's, I don't know anything about that. It's one of them. We'll play that song in the end. Nope. <laughs> no, nope. Gary's Actually, breaking Gary, the record. Gary, play no, punk no, rock. No, show. Gary's breaking the record right now in half. Um. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I'm literally sneezy this up. Sneezy this up, bro. I'm sneezy this up. Maybe it's that magazine. <laughs> no, it's, I was in a car today that uh, usually has a dog in it. Uh. And... <laughs> 
How is that funny? I don't know. I was, why are you so sneezy? I was in a car today. Well, it was funny to me. Like, I saw today, like, so today the dog wasn't there and, like, a person yeah. wasn't there. Like, that's right. <laughs> the dog, the dog, dog had the day like, off. Car, so, like, when you laughed, or I got it. I was like, yeah, totally. And now it's not a dog, it's something else. The yeah. dog's the chauffeur. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh look, Gary turned into a dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we go to um, the correspondence corner? We haven't yeah. gone there in a while. Well, we haven't. Let's yeah. put on the hat. Uh, let's put on the hat, yeah. go sit in the corner, dig through the mailbag. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we're just going to do one. I mean, there's about like 482 letters. Yeah, we can't, get to, we, we, we can't get to everyone. But please keep writing. Uh, okay, so this one is from uh, Kelsey in Chicago, and she writes. Why don't you ask your guests what hobbies they've abandoned? Well, mm. that's a pretty good question. Wow. What, what uh, was her name again? Kelsey. 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 Um, mm. So, Leo T. Leo T. Leo J. Leo J. Leo J. My favorite hobby that, that you've abandoned. That I've abandoned. Oh. I used to do paintballing pretty heavily. Really? Whoa. Yeah. And when I was in seventh grade, I had a guy, I had everything. I spent a ton of money on it. I used to do Warhammer, those miniature games, and I used to do car models. Uh, I did aer- aeroplane models. Yeah. Yeah, those are fun. All right, like A E R O plane. I, I just I can't pronounce the words the way I feel. <laughs> Do you have words you just don't pronounce because you can't, like you don't say them? Because you can't feel them. Uh, <laughs> I can't feel them. Uh, oh, feel them? Did um, you say aluminum? I don't feel Aluminium. Them. Wait, so what'd you abandon? What'd you give up on? Ah, uh, what did, did I give up on? Pogs? Yeah. What was pogs. it? Oh, <laughs> slammers. Deco, deco oh, pogs? pogs. Yeah, pogs. I actually, I had some pogs. Yeah, pogs are uh, legit. But it was like, it wasn't like, I shouldn't have had Pogs. It was all about your slammer, bro. I actually Slammers. don't really n- know anything about Pogs. I don't remember how to play it except for you I don't slammed think, them. Was there really, I mean, there was no internet, right, to look up directions yeah, back then. No. So it's like, um, everyone, every kid was playing Pog different, whatever Pog was. Uh, I would like to take a moment. Wait, was, to, was Pog the late 90s Calvin Ball? It was like 90, it was like Calvin mid Ball is, bro. Calvin like Ball was like Calvin and Hobbes. They, he'd just like make up the rules as he went. Oh, no, there were actual rules to Pogs. Okay. It was more, but know? really it was just an excuse for kids to buy a bunch of shit. Yeah. Pokemon! Yeah, but <laughs> Pokemon's way cooler. Yeah, it was like uh, a- <laughs> I love Pokemon. It's just a well, baseball game. Let's not get into that. Let's Piku not Pie! Piku <laughs> I just want to speak to one fan directly. Her name happens to be Kelsey and she's from Chicago. Oh, she wrote us a letter. Kelsey? Uh, yeah, thanks for writing us a letter. Uh, Did Kelsey know I was going to be on tonight? No. Uh, next Joseph time, didn't know you were going to get to ne- That's true. Ah, I didn't. Ah. Uh, next time you're in town, uh, please try a little bit harder to get in touch with me. Oh, that's oh, really that rude. Kel- is that the Kelsey we're talking about? Uh, maybe. Earlier? Maybe there are two different Kelseys. Too there. busy, Joseph. Too busy, Kelsey. Uh, we had uh, a listener in town. Uh, she wanted to hang out. Uh, I successfully hung out with her and her friends twice. Joseph, how many times did you successfully hang out with her and her friends? They didn't make any. They didn't outreach. No outreach. Uh, I can show you multiple texts from me. That's, There's that's no way to tell. Look, let's let's not get the lawyers involved. Uh, do you think I should frame this full page yeah, ad for yeah. Turner and Hooch? Actually, I fucking do. That's I, I think awesome. I'm going right to. That Tom Hanks is... He's looking great. Who looks better, the dog or Tom Hanks? <laughs> when do you think Tom Hanks is going to do another comedy? Uh, Bridge of Spies was pretty funny. Uh, Yo! <laughs> nothing? Uh, so, continue with our questions. Uh, if you're going to sell the idea of the Pacific Northwest Lo-Fi Archives to Universal Studios, who would play you in the movie? Wow. Um, these are like... And who would play Garrett? Yeah. And who would play Beck? <laughs> who would play Beck? There's just a scene... Uh, sir, you should see this. It's on the internet. Someone did a tribute to One Foot in the Grave. And then he puts down his L. Ron Hubbard book because uh, Beck is a Scientologist. Yeah. Most Very people true. don't like to admit that. It's fuck. Everyone makes fun of John Travolta and Tom Cruise. Beck, second generation, proud to be a Scientologist. Also, if you haven't seen John Travolta in the new O.J. Simpson show, I highly recommend it. Is it a show? Yeah, it's a miniseries. And is it what is it on? Who? It's it's just about the O.J. Simpson. Yeah, but what? Uh, sorry, what uh, is it on? Like a oh FX. FX. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can uh, download it Ill- legally Ill- or illegally. Ill. Illegal. Should we start putting our podcast on Pirate Bay? <laughs> yeah, I'd probably get a lot of listens. But I mean, if we get the right tags. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, Thanks that's for the question. Yeah, why are you avoiding the question? Why are you avoiding the question? I'm just really good at that. Let's get uh, back to it. So yeah, who, who, you know, it's weird. I, I, I like, I love movies and stuff. I just don't really know actors and actresses' names. I know that, well, just, say, that sounds say, like a say, cop out, say, right? Say like, okay, I guess say the guy, that the, person yeah, from the, that the, movie, the guy who is in Bridge of Spies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't. Um, um, did you see Bridge of Spies? Not yet. I'm actually going to watch it this weekend. It's not good. Is it not good? It's just boring. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard that, but I still want to see it. Like who's a, um, you know? I'm just thinking. I would like to be played by like something like a really dry. Would it be like uh, each each person in Entourage taking turns, kind of like that one Bob Dylan movie he were that? Yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was a great or movie. Or the Doctor Parnassus, whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Um, I love those movies you I watch. I could see like, Martin Freeman playing you pretty cool. Ooh, that'd that's be pretty awesome. Good. Yeah, yeah, give me a, give me a movie. Uh, the Especially Hobbit. when he was younger, but you know, the Hobbit, the guy from The Office that was became a Hobbit. The original Office, and he's in the Sherlock show. The Sherlock show. Sherlock. He's in Sherlock. What's that name of the Sherlock show? That's a movie Elementary. Um, there, there's an American one called... Yeah, they used to film... It Lucy Liu and... Uh, yeah, Sequoia. as Watson. Yeah. yeah. I could go for that. I, I do. I like dry and awkward. He, um, hey, he's yeah. your man. Yeah, he's the yeah. guy. I'll have to check out his film, so I'll have to um, IMDb don't, him. Don't watch any of the Hobbit movies. They yeah, the no, Hobbit movies are terrible. I actually but. went to see the... Ho- Is it called The Hobbit? Like, after like the like the actual... The newer yeah, Hobbit. Yeah, was it yeah. called The Hobbit? Desolation of Smaul. I don't know. The Hobbit again. Three, Bridge of Spies. Uh, yeah, so I think I like. Sl- I I just I can't. Yeah, no, I just, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm bored of the race. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Uh, hey, roll over, Beethoven. It's Freddie's fifth. It's you know what? A, what? Fuck you. <laughs> what? Right? Fuck you for not laughing at my headline, but then choosing that to read. It's an yeah. it's an advertisement for, for the. Uh, the fifth. Uh, the uh, listeners. Know, sure it seriously you. says roll over Beethoven. It's Freddie's fifth. I fucking hate. Just you. be careful because like you're right next to that Christian AM frequency, and oh, if someone's yeah. tuned onto it and they hear you cursing. Oh uh, yeah, cursing's loud on AM radio though. That's oh, when they always go, Jesus Christ, I fucking love you. Yeah, but you just have to be ca- you have to be careful. Yeah. Like you don't want anyone to. Uh, and especially because right now Jesus is sucking me off. Right. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Christian AM station listeners. They don't want to hear that. that. Yeah. 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 He, uh, he has risen, right? He has oh, risen. I have. He's the... Uh, yeah, that's just, no. yeah, all right. Now we're just doing word assistance. Okay, uh, let's, let's take a break. Let's pay some bills. All right. All right. Hi, I'm Chicago. I have my own kind of politics, my own kind of music, my sports uh, teams, <clears throat> and when I laugh, <laughs> the whole world grins. I have my own radio station, WGN. We go all day, we go all night. Anytime you want me, just tune in here or give me a call. WGN Radio is Chicago. And we're back. This is Danny. I'm with the two best Josephs in all of Seattle. Whoa! <laughs> we just gave away four tickets to Ario Speedwagon at the fucking Coliseum. <laughs> zing, 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 zing. We're trying a new format. Yeah. Think about <laughs> Crane and the Waking Crew. That's what I used to listen to as a kid. Is that a real yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah. Was it on You're, Disney Radio? No, it was like 106.1. Oh. You lit, like as a teenager, it was like, think about Crane and the Waking Crew. They'd just be like, oh, the whole time. Uh, you know, it's bullshit. Do you, do you know Norm Gregory? Do you, no. I don't know. He was a DJ on a... Uh, like a Seattle station, like a rock station. Was it Kiss? One of some points. Pro- or not Kiss? Sorry, the end. One of some points. I don't know. It was like back in the day, but yeah. he was kind of like a big time DJ, like yeah. uh, on one of the popular rock stations. But he lives in the same building as us. So oh, I was just like, yeah, cool. It's cool. Do, do, do you ever try to record him without him knowing? No, nah, yeah. I don't. He's very. Uh, yeah, we don't see him much when there's a spotting of of Norm. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's like, yeah. When the first time he saw you, did he say no no autographs? I didn't know. I actually had no idea. Yeah, who he, was. <laughs> like, he didn't say hello or anything. He just had no autographs. <laughs> like, I'm just introducing myself. I was, I was sort of saying that to people that I bump into, just like <laughs> my bus driver, or the, the person at QFC. <laughs> Great. Um, Fake it until you make it, you know? Exactly. Because pretty soon yeah. someone's going to be like, all right, I got to get that on. Yeah, I mean, is he famous? He keeps telling me to stop asking him. Um, is there any shows coming up that you're excited about? And um, you're going to whip out the old phone? Yeah, you know, uh, good question. There is there is the Hollow Earth Magma Fest going on. Um, I don't actually know. I feel like I'm so out of the loop. I actually don't even know any bands anymore that are kind of playing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm just, yeah, trying to think who's coming through. I, I, 
I'm not sure. Yeah, I feel like I go out. I used to go to shows like probably like three or four times a week. Now it's like once a once every three months, you know. <laughs> but it's like something I really want to see. But I can't think of anything really coming up. Do you know anything that I might be into based on the songs that I have? Joseph, I don't know. Yeah, what do you that I know um, I'm really looking forward to. Well, I'm not looking forward to it, but the Ubu Roy just posted their oh, yeah. their March new, 26. Yeah, with uh, Bod and Versing. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm kind of disappointed that they're playing their last show at I'm Cairo. I'm so mad they're playing at Cairo. It's it's I hate seeing shows there, but I'm gonna go. So claustrophobic. Yeah, you can't. Uh, it's the worst. Yeah, I mean, paying five dollars to stand in the room next to the room that yeah. he's playing in. Uh, Cairo, maybe we, but we wouldn't be talking so much shit about you if you would have came on the podcast. Or last just year. answer our email. Well, like, no, they like, answered the email. Did they? Did they yeah. say no? Oh, I thought they never even like. I think they they said like yeah we'll do it and then they didn't answer the email. So yeah. Also, speaking of people moving to New York, Jose from Neighbors is moving yeah, to New York. Yeah, saw too. that. Saw Sad that. about that, but that new Neighbors record is very good. I'm not sure if we plugged that on the show yet, but it's excellent. Uh, I don't think we did. Oh well, uh, I didn't go to the show last week. Uh, neither did I. Uh, but I went to the night before, I was at the Black Lodge, hashtag tits, uh, oh, did, a, yeah. did a collaboration with Wolf Eyes. Yeah, I heard about oh. that. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, yeah. It was probably the best time I've seen him play. Wow. Uh, the Shivas played, which the Shivas and hashtag yeah. tits are the perfect two bands to play. Interesting. Uh, right next to each other. Uh, the Shivas are great. I haven't seen them since they became a three piece. I saw them in Portland uh, a few nights before. I oh, yes, yeah, so you yeah, have pictures yeah. of it. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. prefer Power Trio, just so you know. Power Trio. They're <laughs> great, yeah, live. Um, the songs they played, too, I don't know how it was at Black Lodge, but it was they were so, like... Um, like twice the speed of the record, <laughs> like, it was yeah, like yeah. and I was just like, I was just like so interested. Like I heard it, and then I haven't heard the new record, and then I, I got it, and I was I was like, whoa, it sounds like it. Like, I bought the new record, I haven't listened to it yet. It's good. I um, there's some tracks on it. It's good. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so that, that show at the Black Lodge, it's time for me to fess up. I gotta fess up about something. Okay. So that show, well, I like how you look, you look at Yo, I mean. Uh, so that show at the Black Lodge was a benefit for shout your abortion. They were going to have the second volume of their um, uh, tape series, their compilation tape series to raise money. They didn't have it, so they just made like a mini sampler with like a third of the bands. And I went up and I was like, oh, I, can I have this? Uh, I, they said donations. I'm like, oh, here's $5. And they're like, oh, it's not all the bands. I'm like, oh, just, just, just take the $5. And they're really happy. Honestly, uh, I found that five dollars on the ground, uh, and so what? It what? I was fucking when I was walking there. I found the five dollars on the ground, and so that's why I was so insistent on they take the five dollars. I'm glad you fessed up. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad too. So uh, I probably would have gave five anyways, but I just wanted them to know that five dollars was not. I mean, their five, the five dollars is theirs, which is the important thing. Though. Um. Yeah, I agree. Um. What? Any other shows you're looking forward to? No, I hate shows. I feel like there was something on March. Uh, Stickers is playing their last show. Yeah, maybe that's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking. Um, is that the 25th? Yeah, it's like they're both. All the the ending of Punk is this month. Seattle Punk. What happens over. after Punk? The Seattle Seattle's over. Uh, post Punk. Post Punk. Should we, should we shut down the radio show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, nope. No, we're gonna whatever the, comes next. Post Punk. Done. That's not gonna. Ed Murray's on. resigning. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the punkest mayor we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Mike McGinn rode a bike. Hey -o. Uh Mike McGinn did ride a bike. Uh, so, uh, Leo J. Yes. <laughs> uh, what celebrity do you dread dying? Oh, that's, you know, I actually never had any emotion about any person I didn't know dying until uh, Lou Reed. I got oh. really kind of choked up about it. Kind of weird. I meant in the opposite way, like dying. You, yeah, no, no, no. Like you're, <laughs> Do you you're, you're, you're I can't hear. I'm actually really like I'm. You're dead. dreading. No, you're you're dreading, dreading, dreading that someone's gonna die and everyone's gonna be really sad, and you're like, God, I fucking hate that person. Oh yeah, well that happens all like, the time, right? <laughs> well, <I'm>, Jesus. <laughs> no, I mean, no. That's um, not like okay, so Paul McCartney dying, that's gonna suck. Yeah. George Martin dying, eh, not too bad. George Moore. Oh, yeah. They're yeah, pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, it's not annoying that he died. Yeah. I'm going to be uh, sad when Eno dies. Yeah, but yeah. this is who we're all going to I know. Dead. I'm just sad now. I also kind of, part of me feels like I'm really surprised about my Lou Reed thing. Um, I mean, Lou Reed actually did put out some great stuff in his later years. I love Lou Reed. Yeah. But, like, when he <sighs> died... I felt like I, he was like always like the first. And I was like, oh man, sometimes it's maybe people should die off early. Wait, did he die? Lou Reed? Yeah. 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 Like three years ago, yeah. four years ago, really? five years ago. Six? Yeah. But no, it, that's crazy. <laughs> Do you 
you need a moment? Are you sad? Yeah, I mean, I actually did think he was still alive. That sucks. Yeah. Well, it's just one of those, I don't know. It's like, well, you know, it sounds kind of morbid, but like there's so many musicians that kind of are a really big force and then they, you know, they die early and it's just like, well, what if they, you know, stayed around to through the eighties and they put out some really bad albums. Uh, I always think Louis should have died. You know, it's funny because, you know, um, he's kind of, he came around. I, I feel the like... The day after he released Middle Machine Music? It's uh, maybe the day before. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I love Middle Machine Music. Um, yeah. And that, so, so, yeah, so that was my first reaction. But I don't know. So if someone were to die, like a celebrity, who would I, who would I be like, what? Eh, like, it's like, I'm sick of fucking hearing people like Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. That's going to suck. I mean, yeah, stuff's going to... I don't know. Yeah, I guess our it depends on the death. Me. Yeah, or me. I yeah, because it's that's an easy question for me. Yeah, some people go nuts every payday. Just reading that. <laughs> that was payday, good. Yeah. But do you think we should do uh, one episode that's just a video of us reading these magazines <laughs> and like the camera stuck? Well, you know, we still haven't done the 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 Nixon video. So oh yeah, we have the Nixon videos. Yeah. we'll do those soon. Uh, you know what? Beastie Boys, Deaf, Not Dumb. Uh, it's a review of Paul's Boutique. Guess how many stars wow. Paul's Boutique gave it? Two. I guess. Four. Four, you're right. Oh, fuck. Well, he read that issue already. Yeah, it's true. It's probably like brainwashed and fun. All right, well, I think I that's... Things. Yeah, I mean, I gotta, I gotta go. Let's All go. Right. All right. Oh, well, actually, you don't have to go. It's the next show has to come in. Oh, the next show has to come in. Uh, so, everyone, uh, it's been another week of Accents on Purpose. Uh, stay tuned for uh, everyone's favorite children's show, uh, The Burping Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in next. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank our guest, Dane. Do you mind if I do that? Uh, why, don't you, why don't you keep it between the Josephs? Okay. Hey, Joseph. Leave, leave Joseph. me out of it. Joseph. It's good to meet another Joseph. It was great to meet another yeah. Joseph. You're, you're doing the name justice. Cool. Which cool. I love. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah. You do is Thanks awesome. for having me. Thanks. Awesome. And yeah. everyone should check out your website. And on Facebook, you're on Facebook, right? I am I on mean, Facebook. The, yeah, yeah. The Lo-Fi Archives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks cool. so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, thank you once again. Keep one uh, finger on the pause button, one foot in the grave. And fuck <laughs> you for listening. <laughs>